Good morning and welcome to St. Charles. As we begin, let us recite the stewardship prayer found on page 7 of the bulletin. Lord God, you alone you are the alone source of every good, every gift, good gift, for the vast, array, the vast of array of our universe, universe and, the and the mystery of each human, human life. life. We, we praise, praise you and we thank you, thank you for, your for your great power and, and your tender, tender faithful love. love. Everything, everything we are and everything, everything we have is, is your gift. gift. And after having created us, you have given us into the keeping of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the name and spirit of Jesus, we commit ourselves to be good stewards of the gifts entrusted to us, to share our time, our talent, our material gifts as an outward sign of the treasure we hold in Jesus. Amen. Our presider is Father DeLucia. Please stand. Christ, 
begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king has come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom should I shrink? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? Of whom should I be of my life. 
presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Hope in God and take heart. Hope in the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? Of whom should I be afraid? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, You are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through this Spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But by the Spirit, to be put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 give the glory and the honor to the Lord, alleluia, 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 give the glory and the honor to the with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew glory to you O Lord at that time Jesus exclaimed I give praise to you father Lord of heaven and earth for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned you have revealed them to little ones yes father such has been your gracious will all things have been handed over to me by my father no one knows the son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Murder hornets. One more thing, one more plague in 2020 for the United States of America. Not a real big deal, don't. Just last week I was referring to Godzilla, this 3,000 mile long dust cloud that came from the Sahara Desert in Africa and it came up over Florida and all the way to Texas and darkened the skies and made breathing more difficult for those with breathing. That, That was another plague in our list of plagues. Murder hornets, I was reading about them this past week. Their official name is 
East Asian giant hornets. They'd been around for a long time in Japan. Somehow, a queen smuggled herself in over the Canadian border, they think, and established a colony. This particular hornet is almost two inches long, and it looks like a science fiction movie creation, black and yellow with giant mandibles, giant jaws that are powerful, invincible. Good news is they're not out for us. They don't arbitrarily attack human beings, but they do attack our honeybees, and that threatens us. That's a problem for us. So our latest plague, they showed up in May again, not far from here, not in great numbers, but they attack honeybee hives and wipe them out. They feed off of the bee itself. Doesn't take many of these giant hornets, these murder hornets, to do it. A small group enters a honeybee hive of so many bees, and they just begin killing bees with these huge jaws. The poor honeybees, they courageously come up against the invader one one at a time like good soldiers. They throw themselves at the invader one at a time, one at a time like good soldiers. And these murder hornets can decapitate a honeybee in less than two seconds. They leave piles of bodies. Within an hour, a hive is decimated. The bees can't do it. The hornet's too big. But here's what's interesting. In Japan, where they have been around for a long time, their honeybees have evolved and evolved a strategy to overcome the murder hornets. Very interesting. When murder hornets raid a honeybee hive there, the bees, rather than throw themselves individually against the invaders, they unite. They cluster in balls of bees, a cluster for each of the invaders. They surround the invader, and then they vibrate their wings furiously, and they raise the temperature in the hive well over 100 degrees. Now, the small honeybees can withstand it, but the large two-inch long murder hornet cannot, and basically is just roasted, decimated, done. Although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, God, you have revealed them to the honeybees, the little ones. God is one. Everything about God is being one. And God's will for us, God's children, is to be one. It's the only way we can deal with the plagues of this world in our individual lives and in our national life right now. Those little honeybees, those little ones, are touched by the dynamic of God. They realize that one at a time, as angry as they get, as courageous as they can be, they can't withstand such a big problem like the murder hornet. And so they learned to work together, to work together and protect the whole, the hive. On this Independence Day weekend, we need to learn the wisdom of the honeybees, the wisdom of God. We little ones need to be little ones and open to the dynamic of God who is one and wills that we be one. We have big problems big problems as a nation, it seems more than ever. And our biggest problem is division. Everyone has found a reason to divide up against another. Colors and ethnicities and positions and philosophies and political parties and, and, and all sorts of horrible words are thrown back and forth. In our own recent memories, I don't know if we've ever seen the United States suffering from such division. But it's time, it's time to open to God and accept God's wisdom in the simplicity of honeybees, the little ones, 
and come together, cluster together, work together as one unit to overcome our bigger problems, bigger than us, the pandemic. People are divided over the pandemic, masks, no masks, separation, no separations, all sorts of anger, all sorts of attitudes all the time. We've got it here at church. We've been told more than once what we should or shouldn't do. There's all sorts of division about a virus that doesn't care about our division. It just decimates us like the murder hornet. We've got to come together. We've got to come together and work together and put aside attitudes and emotions and of all the emotions, anger and overcome our enemy the racial divide, the racial tensions, the, the, the streets that are on fire, all of it, the only answer is, is unity. The only answer is talking, coming together, working together, working for what's better for our nation. We have so many big problems. We can't deal with it when we divide up. Those problems destroy us. It's only when we come together as a people, God's people, as the American people, this 4th of July weekend as the American people that we can continue on and find for this nation better, not worse. Equality under the law for all, for all, and law and order for all, to protect all. Enough of finger pointing and accusing and cussing and cursing and blaming. It's the police. It's, it's time to come together for the good of the nation. Justice for all, law and order for us all. Those two pillars hold up our freedom, our freedom to live and enjoy happy lives. One other thing, my opinion, with some study put to it, we are going through right now, especially in our country, an apocalypse. Now. When people hear apocalypse, they get really nervous. That means the end of the world. No, 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 no. There will come an end to the world. Jesus said, don't even talk about it. No one knows it, not even the angels. Just don't talk about that. There will be a finality. But no, no, in the meantime, throughout history, apocalypses happen. What it means is one world comes to an end with some violence and some upheaval only to open up the way to a new world with some progress and development. That's an apocalypse. Apocalypse means a revelation, a finding something out, finding out that we can do better and be better. We're going through an apocalypse. All of this upheaval, all of this violence, all of this fear, all of this suffering we're going through. Yes, it's an apocalypse, but it's headed in the right direction because God's hands are around all of it. See, as believers, that's, that's what makes the difference. What's happening in the streets, what's happening in our own bodies, what's happening in the hospitals, what's happening throughout the world, all of these things that are so, so frightening. We come back to our basic belief, they're all under God's control ultimately, and God will use all of this to bring good. It's sort of like a woman in labor, scripture says. Such upheaval! Her world has ended, such misery, such pain, such, such, such an impossible task. And then finally a baby is born, a new life comes into the world. And, and scripture says, and she can barely remember the pain for the joy. See, that's the concept of apocalypse. Upheaval and change. One world ends, but a new world begins. That's what's happening to us right now. We need to believe that. We must believe that. That's our faith. We should not say, we must not say, it's all going to hell. It's all just going to hell. It's not. We are going through hell in so many ways in this year 2020, and especially in this United States of America, our nation. We are going through hell, but only because God has a plan, and God's hand is in this plan, and it's all about bringing us all just a little closer to heaven. Believe. Amen.
Let us stand and profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, to God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial to the Father, to him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the conscious Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to God the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in our God, let us lift our knees in petitions to heaven. That the members of the church be filled with the Spirit and live as true stewards. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That on this Independence Day weekend, all might be committed to the highest ideals of this nation. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who are weary from the burdens of daily life find support and solace in the love of Jesus. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gather at this table find their faith the strength to meet every difficulty, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That God raise to life all who have fallen asleep in Christ, especially our mass intentions of this day, for Gabriel Giambantista and Robert Zerwinski, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And pause now for our own intentions. And for those we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray only in the name of Jesus, crucified and risen, our Lord and God with us forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sacrifice with your hands, we praise and for it is our good and good of all his holy church. May this offering dedicated to you purify us, O Lord, day by day bring our conduct closer to the light of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and trust. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, eternal God, and Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, gave us life eternal. And so, with angels of archangels, we sing to him of your glory and without end, we have prayed. Yes. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you, Paul, the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. to God. And safely enjoy the rest of this holiday weekend. Those receiving Holy Communion may kneel or be seated. Um. 